Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please come in. And uh, my experience from last year tells me that if you're in, you need to be in and sort of quiet. And if you're going to have side conversations, you have to leave the room because the side conversations are really loud uh, in this room here. So uh, please come in, take a seat. And if you're going to continue your side conversation, then please keep them outside. <laughs> One or the other. Uh, you're welcome to do it. Touch me side and shake me. Thank you very, very much. We have a great afternoon program here as well. And I uh, have the privilege of showcasing yet another video. This is an innovation we've tried to introduce at our conference this year just to be a little provocative. And so we asked a local video maker here. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, if you're going to keep talking, go outside. If you're going to be inside, stop talking. <laughs> that's, that's the rule. Um, so we asked uh, a local video producer to produce a couple of thought-provoking videos. One of them we'll see tomorrow, which is about Russia. One of them we'll see tomorrow, which is about Russia. The other one is about uh, Europe and development in Europe and parallels with developments in Georgia. So we're going to start that video off first, and if we can get that up on the screens on the side, we'll, we'll watch that. Советского Союза было крупнейшей геополитической катастрофой века. Today we are all George. So what we have is a we gotta love the creativity and the thoughtfulness of Georgian uh, art and film and television production, I have to say. Um, what we have is a history of walls and tearing down walls, a history of conflict, and a history of trying to build security. And with, that's kind of the focus looking forward this afternoon. We had discussions this morning about the domestic situation in Georgia. We're now going to be looking at Georgia and, and Europe and NATO. And to kick us off with that, we have a conversation be moderated by my friend and former colleague from the State Department, uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary Colleen Graffy, who's now back at Pepper University, a law professor. And she'll be moderating a conversation with the uh, Minister of Defense, Ivoria, and with the um, U.S. Undersecretary of State for International Security Affairs, Andrea Thompson. So please come to the stage. Please welcome. Her. Good afternoon. As Kurt mentioned, I'm Colleen Graffy. I'm a law professor in international law with Pepperdine University, which is based in Malibu, California, London, and Washington, D.C. And I'm delighted to be here in conversation 
with Undersecretary Andrea Thompson and our Defense Minister from Georgia, uh, Levan Izoria. Uh, to start out with uh, Andrea Thompson, this is uh, marking the, t last year marked the 25th anniversary of our establishing diplomatic relations between Georgia and the United States. Everyone in this room knows what a special place Georgia holds for the United States. And your presence here today, in fact, underscores that, your second visit, and that sends a very important message. But let's face it, internationally, we have a lot going on. We have North Korea, INF, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Ukraine, not to mention a uh, aligning of former adversaries, Russia and China, in these massive war games that start today, Vostok 18, with Russia. So with all that's going on globally, how does Georgia fit into that strategic overall picture with regarding to international security? Uh, thanks, Kalina, and thanks to the group. Uh, it is a great honor to be here. It's the first time I've been to the Tbilisi International Conference, uh, but as Kalina mentioned, not the first time to Georgia. It's my first time as Undersecretary, but I had the great honor of coming last August with the Vice President when serving as his National Security Advisor. Uh, and those continued uh, discussions uh, don't stop just, uh, just when we're here. Uh, they carry back to Washington, D.C., across the United States, and to our international fora. Uh, so it is great to be back, uh, great to see some familiar faces and to get out into the countryside yesterday. It, it might be useful context if I take uh, you know, a few seconds and describe what my portfolio is and to, to build on to some of the questions we may have later. So as Colleen mentioned, I'm the Undersecretary for Arms Control and International Security. In State Department talk, I'm the T family, uh, and that covers uh, the arms control, verification, and compliance. It covers uh, international security and nonproliferation and political military affairs, the foreign military sales, which we'll probably talk about today. Uh, but more importantly, uh, the reason I'm here is to, to reaffirm the message of the president, the message of the vice president, the message of Secretary Pompeo, Secretary Mattis, uh, all the way on, down the line with the administration on what an important strategic partner Georgia is for the United States, will continue to be an important strategic partner I uh, talked to the group earlier today. We stand shoulder to shoulder, not only diplomatically, militarily, in our national uh, strategies, economically, uh, across all the tools. Uh, I had the great honor of serving with Georgian uh, military forces in Afghanistan. We'll probably talk about that today as well. Uh, well. I served in uniform for 28 years and from 2009 to 2010 in Afghanistan, again, with the great soldiers of Georgia side by side. Uh, we've seen that relationship continued just last month with uh, Noble Partner, uh, just an incredible uh, demonstration of our partnership, of our uh, compatibility, of our shared lessons learned. Uh, and this is a path that Georgia has done in such a short amount of time. Uh, when you look at the video, and just in a few short 10 years, the progress and reform that the Georgian government has made, uh, the path that we will work together forward uh, but it's important to reflect on the past, but more importantly, I think in this forum, to look towards the future. Uh, I'm going to keep my remarks very short because I want to give more time uh, to our Q&A session. But again, it's a great honor. It's a great opportunity. I thank you for the invitation. And for all my uh, Georgian friends here, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Uh, Defense Minister, I know you have a few words you want to say in particular. Give us uh, your assessment of where Georgia's defense relationship lies with regard to the United States and NATO, and perhaps overall as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. First of all, I want to convey some concrete messages. And after that, of course, we will discuss our strategic relationship. When we speak about global security context, in my opinion, U.S. national security strategy most adequately acknowledges the current global security environment. According to the strategy, we are living in a competitive world. We are a democratic free world. The West is confronted by the authoritarian regimes. With regard to Europe, the authoritarian Russia is a substantial threat to the European community. 
which with revenge policies occupied 20% of Georgia and then annexed Crimea. Moscow is trying to break the unity of the West by weakening its democratic institutions. Georgia is an integral part of the West, which guarantees Georgia's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and the rights and freedoms of its citizens. Through democratic development, Georgia's aim is to become a member of NATO, EU, and a strategic re regional ally of the US. Today, our aim should be preserving and strengthening the West. Only by doing so, we can deter Russian aggression. US rightly recognizes the issue and as a solution puts forward the notion of strategic preservation. To my way of thinking, this, is, this translates into the importance of unity of NATO and the EU. As for the strengthening of the West in a competitive world, the cornerstone for defending our common values must be the strength of our military. In my opinion, strategic preservation through renovation, first of all, means the renovation of the defense policy of NATO, NATO member and partner states, process in which leadership of the United States and strengthening military cooperation and defense capabilities of allies and partners is of utmost importance. In my opinion, for European Union, this translates into European strategic autonomy, which entails a higher set of responsibilities from the European countries in the field of defense to preserve NATO as the cornerstone of the European security. As for Georgia, which is on the front line of the direct threat of the Russian authoritarian regimes, the adequate response for the Georgian government is to preserve and strengthen the, its efforts towards the integration in NATO, EU, and the West. This is the national self-realization process, not strategic patience, but strategic readiness. Through the lens of military perspective, the main aim of our strategic readiness is to develop our territorial self-defense and resilience capabilities, to enhance its interoperability with the alliance, and to be continuously ready for NATO membership. So we uh, are doing a lot and we taking some concrete steps towards this integration and so of course I'm ready to underline this again with questions and uh, thank you, Andrea. You heard from the defense minister there a lot of focus on NATO. And you were here last year with Vice President Mike Pence. And during his visit to Georgia, he confirmed America stands with Georgia and that the United States, quote, strongly supports Georgia's aspirations to become a NATO member. Is this still U.S. policy? Yes, ab absolutely. Uh, like I said, the vice president noted it last year, and we've had multiple occasions when we affirmed that. But I think it's also important to note it's not only in, in word, but in deed, in action, in tangible and concrete symbols of our relationship, of our partnership. Again, because I have the de defense minister uh, here at my side, just last month, as we had uh, trained out in the training areas, we exercise that, whether it's maritime security out in the Black Sea, as we work together to, to uh, build the operations center, whether it's information exchange, the list goes on and on. There's many tangibles and many uh, public affirmations of the success and the partnership between our two countries. It's not only the people to people, uh, but it's also, again, diplomatically, economically. Uh, and we'll continue to build upon it. So the sh long, long answer to the short question, but it's, it's an important answer. Uh, that absolutely, it's continual priority for this administration. How do you feel we can convince allies of that? Is there a role for the United States with regard to allies that perhaps might not be as forthcoming as the United States? I think the actions uh, the, the, the reaffirmed in July at the, at the summit 
And our allies have reaffirmed that, the importance of the NATO aspirations, the, the continued reform that's necessary in making those steps. Uh, and I think in dialogue that I've had here in country and that we've had in international forums, the allies support that as well. Thank you. And uh, Under Secretary Thompson has underscored some of the ways that Georgia has been such a significant partner. And I, just one of them, one of the top contributors to resolute support that's helping to train Afghan forces. Georgia was one of the largest non-NATO contributors to ISAF in Afghanistan. You were part of the peacekeeping force in Kosovo, uh, exercises in the Black Sea. And, uh, but that was then, and what about now? And is this commitment going to be at the same level of engagement in the future? Of course, we are committed to NATO, to our strategic ally, the US, and we will continue our engagement in international missions in Afghanistan and in uh, Central Africa in framework of uh, European security. But I want to mention that uh, we started this year for our territorial self-defense, a very important program. This is Georgian Defense Readiness Program. So with that, we will be uh, ready to uh, defend ourselves. And our aim is, as I mentioned, to be ready for NATO integration, and we'll, it will be very supportive on that path. Uh, so we prepared our soldiers in previous year for international missions more, and this is now complementary to that mission. So we started uh, uh, reforms with new strategies and new national plans, which envisage uh, that Georgia must be one of the examples for comprehensive security strategy made by the US and underlined in Authorization Act, which means to help neighboring countries fair facing threat from Russia and especially focusing on territorial defense. And Georgia can, could be one of the good examples uh, because we did a lot more rather than some other NATO countries. For example, uh, during the last two years, we reduced, and this was very uh, strong, very difficult decision, but we made this decision reduced for personal cost in our budget, so we increased from 767 to 53%, and with that, allocated money on uh, readiness equipment, uh, equipment, uh, equipment, and uh, now we have 2% uh, uh, on uh, defense budget from overall budget, and first time, more than 20% on main acquisition. We received Javelin system uh, from the US, and we now requested to receive air defense system Stinger. And uh, why I describe all of these things? Because for our preparation and for our, as I call, strategic readiness, it's important not only to deliver some speeches or <laughs> information or theoretical minds, it is important military to sense ourselves. That's why I see reinforcement, and that's why I see strengthening of our unity. Uh, in, first of all, in military strengths, and Georgia did and do a lot of things with the U.S. support, with uh, in framework of SNGP, from support of other NATO member countries, to develop these capabilities and to be ready every day for NATO membership. So, to summarize what I said, we did a lot and we are ready and we will continue our commitment, of course, to NATO in domestic issue as well as in international missions as well. Thank you very much. We'll now open it up to the audience. Where are the microphones? And our first question is here and a second question here. Where do we have microphones? All right, then you get mine. Here you go. And introduce yourself. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Zviad Adzimbaya, recent graduate of the Fletcher School of Plan Diplomacy, Your Excellencies. My question is brief. What are some two, three concrete steps that you think Georgia and the United States to take to advance their cooperation in the security field? 
Thank you. So I heard a little rumble outside, but I want to make sure I have the question. What are three steps that the U.S. and Georgia could work together to increase the national security? The security cooperation. Well, an example that, that we've taken that we'll, we'll, I would imagine we will take again, uh, an example of uh, a long-term strategic partnership is in our defense sales. Very candidly and selfishly, because I cover the foreign military sales and direct commercial sales for the State Department, that's, that's, a, that's an example of a long-term strategic partnership. So we've worked uh, already for defensive equipment. We've worked with some of the excess defense equipment with the uh, Coast Guard and providing uh, boats for the Coast Guard to be able to uh, use maritime security in the Black Sea, and we've had examples of that of late when, uh, that will exercise that. So that, that's an example is to build upon, that, build upon that as the next step in the defense equipment. Uh, I think another example is, again, what you've seen uh, in, the, in the Black Sea and what we saw on the ground here in Noble Partner uh, and in Agile Spirit, which I believe is still ongoing exercise, is continued exercising between our respective nations. Whether it's bilaterally or whether it's in, within a NATO exercise, that is something else that we can build upon. Again, as an old soldier, you get better by training and you get better by training with your partners. So the more often that we can get our troops together uh, in the sea and the air, on the land, to exercise that, that increases our national security and our foundation for that. Uh, and then in the, third, in the third area that increases with national security is continued reform. Uh, you've heard our president say that economic prosperity is tied to your national security. So it's continued reform and we assist, but really Georgia has the lead for that, but as we assist as, as a partner on those reforms, that will also add to the, to the national security. So it's, those would be just three examples of many I could provide. Thank you. So it was underlined in uh, National Authorization Act exactly three main issues, what is important for our relationship. This is to receive lethal uh, equipment from the U.S. This is enhancement of our self-defense capability and territorial defense capability. And that's why I mentioned we are on the right path. We started this two years ago. And we will continue this, but I mentioned uh, as well that we see our engagement as an important part of uh, complex, uh, uh, comprehensive security strategy uh, uh, delivered by the, this mentioned act. And uh, that's why we want to share our experience with uh, 11 of 12 countries where, which was mentioned in this act. There are countries, uh, as I mentioned, facing threat coming from Russia, so neighboring nations, uh, and uh, uh, we want to share our experience regarding total defense approach, which means that uh, engagement of all agencies, all societies, important as well. We share this with Baltic countries, with uh, Scandinavian countries, and all of these steps described as important is, uh, is, see, is uh, seen as a uh, whole comprehensive strategy and we are ready to continue this. Hi, I'm Ian Bond from the Centre for European Reform in London. Uh, Under Secretary, I was glad to hear what you said about US commitment to the enlargement of NATO. But I'm very struck that um, Republican Senator Rand Paul, uh, after meeting uh, President Trump a few days ago, uh, suggested that actually this, this should be something that we could trade with Russia. Uh, an agreement not to enlarge NATO to um, Ukraine and Georgia. And indeed, the president himself, after the NATO summit, uh, seemed to call into question the commitment to, um, to the defense of NATO allies when he said that uh, uh, the Montenegrins were an aggressive people and they could land you in World War III. So uh, I, I'm just wondering 
um, you know, where exactly do we stand on this? I, I know what the Vice President has said, I know what Secretary Mattis and others have said, but, but who speaks for the administration on this? And perhaps a related question, as we see the Russians moving forward the, um, the barbed wire on the uh, dividing line with South Ossetia, uh, what messages is the, uh, the US government giving to the Russian government about the consequences of continuing to take Georgian territory? Thank you very much for the interesting uh, conversation. Uh, Madam Secretary, I, I, I want to ask you, referring to the US national security strategy, uh, and also to the concept of the cooperation and competition, which is highly uh, discussed within the international relationists, let's say so. Uh, practically, how do you see the implication of this concept uh, between Georgia and Russia uh, by the um, different domains of the national power. Thank you. Uh, let me also join the words of thanks for the very interesting conversation. My name is Tamar Hulordava. I represent Parliament of Georgia from Georgian Dream. Uh, the topic of discussion is uh, global security, and global security is very important, of course, to all of us. Georgia lies at a very important geopolitical place. Uh, I believe, and I think you will agree with me, that peace and security in this region is very much linked with the peace and security in Europe, on European continent as such. U.S. has vital interest in ensuring peace and security, at least that is how it is and how we see it. Uh, we have also seen that we have not evolved since uh, 10 years in terms of promising Georgia NATO membership. Uh, and actually one of the arguments for doing, for not going one step or two steps ahead of that uh, promise and statement was that we want to maintain stability and peace, and not to irritate or not to provoke further conflict. But what we've seen is with this decision, with protracting the decision of Georgia's NATO membership, we have seen conflict in Georgia, we have seen conflict in uh, uh, Ukraine, which is uh, still ongoing, um, should we reconsider? What is it that we should reconsider? Is it Georgia's NATO membership that Georgia should reconsider? reconsider? Or can US be more uh, uh, precise and more uh, pushy towards Western partners, other members of the alliance in terms of demanding uh, and pushing forward uh, NATO enlargement for ensuring peace and stability in our region. Thank you. Go ahead and start perhaps with Ian's provocative question. The provocative three-part question or two-part question. So uh, it's okay. I've, the, the three questions is six, but I welcome the opportunity to, to share my thoughts and hopefully we'll get some great questions for our defense minister as well. Uh, so just to comment on that, you know, the, the administration has been consistent on the commitment to NATO and the commitment to uh, the ironclad relationship on, of Article 5. Uh, the pres presidents reaffirmed that, the vice presidents reaffirmed it m multiple times. Uh, again, both Secretaries Pompeo and Mattis, uh, down, down the line, both in, in defense and uh, in the State Department and candidly in the White House as well. So our commitment to NATO and the Article 5 commitment is ironclad has been the case and will continue to be the case, and uh, we, we stand uh, f firm on that. Uh, so that, to answer, I think that answers the first, the first question. Uh, there was a question about uh, what are we doing with Russia? Um, and we've talked about this uh, in, in the bylets this morning, but we've had continued discussions on this, on how we work together on Russian aggression. We've, we've both seen Russian aggression, uh, some in different ways. Uh, from my portfolio, it's uh, Russia not upholding their end of international agreements uh, and multilateral treaties, whether it's the INF Treaty, whether it's Open Skies. Uh, so we work together, again, bilaterally in international fora as Russia has a disregard to the commitments they made in that. What are we doing with, with Russia? You've seen the sanctions that U.S. has in place. Uh, you talked uh, with, with uh, Ukraine until they uphold their obligations on the Minsk Agreement. We will continue to sanction Russia. Uh, so this administration has been very firm uh, with Russia, both uh, in, again, in our, uh, our disciplined engagements and talks uh, and in our tough sanctions. And 
we look, look forward to continued engagement with Georgia on some uh, lessons learned and best practices as we continue to, to push back on Russian aggression uh, and Russians' uh, decision to not uphold the agreements that they've made in international communities. Thank you. I want to respond to some of those questions. We just really only have about two minutes. And I know you want strategic readiness over strategic patience, but will Georgia have the strategic patience as you await a future with NATO? No, no, better to have strategic readiness because this is active process in which we are trying to enhance our capabilities with your support. And uh, regarding global security and regarding um, adequate response in competitive war to Russia's threats, it is important for us, everyone, with uh, NATO allied countries and partner countries, first of all, to bolster neighboring country from Russia to respond to this threat. First of all, military, what we do with NATO and our strategic partner, US. First of all, Second, it's important to enhance our cooperation. That's why I mentioned to share information practices. NATO must as well make me emphasis on regional trainings. We will have next year such training in March. And of course, this cooperation must be delivered with same approaches and Total defense is, I think, the right approach for that, which means involvement of all societies. That's why we reestablished conscript system. We are in the process to establish new reserve and mobilization system. During these two years, we increased the number of countries which are, were involved in multinational exercises. We have excellent exercises, noble partner, agile spirit, and it will be increased. So we have ambitious to have more than 30 NATO and partner countries in two years. So with that approaches and with that strength, I should see our actions, not patience, <laughs> and readiness that we are ready to defer threats. Well, on that positive note, uh, thank you very both, very much for being in conversation with us and our audience. Thanks to you as well.